Hello everybody and welcome to a cloudy day over here in southern Spain. So I thought I'd do some sewing and I'd finished a project recently that I thought turned out really nicely and wanted just to share with you how I did it. So the project that I did was here, um, which is some little individual towels. Um, they're going to go in my bathroom, guest bathroom, so that guests aren't sharing the same towel in these Covid days. Um, and what I did was I'd bought before two, um, I don't think they're cotton, I think they're polyester, but they're a very super absorbent toweling type fabric and they were sold with just an overlocked edge and they were quite big. They're supposed to be one of these like super quick drying ones that you can take camping and uh, and what have you. Um, anyway, we decided, we tried them but didn't like them in the bathroom, so I decided that these could be a good project to be cut up. So what I did was I took the original big single towel and I folded it into three into thirds um, and then cut again into making these little square shapes so then they're not they're not that big let me just um, measure this for you so that one's 10 inches by 11 inches approximately but they're just a nice size just to wipe your hands on them and then drop them in a basket um, for washing so they're just single use towels from the guest bathroom. So what I did though, I didn't want to lose edge, I didn't want it overlocked, is I have added a bias trim edge to it. So hopefully that's something that looks nice and it's a project you think you might like to have a go at doing. So how did I do it? First of all, cut your towel up. Can be a, t a cotton towel, doesn't matter. Anything, if you've got a towel that's got marks on it that won't come out, um, then that's perfect because you can cut around the toweling where the marks are and then once you've got all of those lined up um, let me just fold this one back up again and put it out the way because that's our finished article for now and um, once you've got your bits all cut up this one's the other one that I had that's pink and it's all fraying on the edges as you can see and getting rid of lots of fluff is then decide what fabric you want to use so here I auditioned a few fabrics. We've got a nice stripe, which if we cut on the cross grain would look nice. Another floral, again, could look nice. This pink I thought was a little bit too twee. Um, and the one that I ended up choosing in the end was this um, grey fabric with purpley strips in it, which I think pick out nicely the magenta in the towel. So, make your bias binding. That's the next step. And what I've done here is I've actually used, this is two and a quarter by a spiny, you can use an hour if you want. And I have taken a two and a quarter inch strip. I folded it in half first and ironed it. And then I folded, opened that out and then folded both sides into the middle. And that's given us the bias binding then to be able to fold over and use on our towels. There is a short video as to how I make bias binding like this using the pin on your ironing board method which you might find useful. So have a look at that one if you wanted to and it might give you some tips, a different way of doing it without using a bias binding tool or just having a go at making your own. You don't have to buy it ready made, it's, it's cheap and fun. So anyway, also just one other tip before I finish, this is actually bias binding that I've made on the bias. I know that sounds might sound obvious, but you can make bias binding or binding on the straight of grain, but it doesn't curve, it doesn't have a stretch around a corner as well as bias binding when it's been cut on the bias. So again, this is bit bias binding that has been cut on the bias and has been double folded to give us this, this nice edge. Okay, in the next video I will show you how I get started. Thank you. So I've made my squares out of um, fabric, I'm going to flip on that one, sorry. So I've made my squares out of my toweling that I'm going to use. The other thing that I've done is I've rounded the corners on each of the corners. So just go ahead, do that on all of them. Literally you can freehand it, just literally just start at one edge and then just snip round. Um, and it doesn't need to be precise because we're not going to win any prizes with these. It's just to use as in our own bathroom um, and as a bit of a fun item. Obviously you can be as precise as you like. You can take a circle shape. I haven't got one here at the moment, but you could take a circle shape like this gift tag and just pop it on the corner 
and then just use that as a guide to to to, to um, pop it on the corner and just use that as a guide to cut round or to um, use as a template if you need to. Um, but as I say, I just I just freehanded these. Okay. So the next, what we're going to actually do for the next stage is we're going to then add the bias binding onto the edge. So this one's an unfinished one at the moment. This one here I started with the contrast thread which doesn't look quite so nice so I did switch to a, a, the same colour thread. And what I have done is I've chosen a long side, long edge. And I'll, if I get a new one. So I'm going to choose a long edge. So this is the longest edge here. So I'm going to choose here. And I've got the edge of my bias tape here. And what I am going to do is I'm going to unfold the first piece of the bias so it's open. Let's do it that way so you can see. And put it against the edge of the towel. Now if you want to, you can just pin that just to so you know where you are starting off. Leave a bit of a tail that's free. And I'll explain why that's useful later. So you're kind of starting about a quarter of the way down your edge and this bit I am going to leave free I'm going to start where my pin is sewing and I'll show you why later so we're straight onto a corner and as you can see if you're careful if you just try it with your fingers first you can add the bias trim to the edge of the towel and follow it round and then straighten out again and the edge of the tape because it's on the bias will stretch for you to enable you to put that on there. So I'm going to change the angle of the camera and we'll go to the sewing machine. I'm only going to start pin the first one because as you go you can manipulate it as, you, as you're sewing. So I'll do that bit next. Thank you. Okay so here we are ready to sew now. I'm just going to pop my little towel underneath my so press a foot and then because my presser foot's down I'm going to just remove the pin holding it the bias binding in place don't need that anymore at the moment and what I'm going to do is before I start sewing is I'm just going to pull the tape around oh, we can't see very well there you go pull the tape around the curve can you see how that's curving nicely round and it's actually following the edge of the towel I can hold on to my threads and I'm going to use my needle down function for this, so push that down and that's going to anchor everything in place. And then I'm going to take a few stitches forward and a few stitches back, just to secure our end of thread. And then this isn't about racing round because that's how you'll get puckers in your bias tape. What we want to do is just take nice steady stitches all the way round and stop and manipulate the fabric if we need to. So here we go. So let me just have a go at doing this so you can see. Right, so we're just going to go round. Again, the needle's going to stop in because I've used that function. I can lift my presser foot up and just twist my work slowly. And that way we shouldn't get any puckers in the bias binding. So I'm using the line, the, the ironed line of the bias as my guide. You can be a step or two away from it a step or two, a stitch or two or widths away from, from that if you want to. But as you see, you can just twist your work and manipulate it as you're working. So I've just moved the camera slightly for you so that you can see a little easier, hopefully. Needle's still down in the work. I'm just taking it steady around this corner. Stop again. Manipulate our fabric. It, so it's nice and neat and just pull out any because you might have in your tape and then we're off again again just adjust stop and adjust as you need to with the needle down you know you've worked safe it's not going to get any of those jumps in your stitches which we don't like to have into another corner so needle down and let's just manipulate this so we've got a join in our bias binding here as well but that's okay we can work with that I'm just going to pull the tape out a little bit slightly that's it and off we go again bit of a pucker coming up so lift up the foot 
just pull the fabric out a little bit to ease that down. As long as it's flat underneath the needle, we'll be okay. And just gently manipulate our work to work around. Okay, so let's just lift that fold of fabric underneath there. We don't need that to be bunched up. Just sing to yourself or have a slurp of tea or coffee whilst you're waiting for me to get round. These are such a quick little satisfying project to make that they're quite fun actually. I've enjoyed making them and I think they look super in a guest bathroom as well, especially if you've got coordinating fabrics with your colour scheme or you could have a beach theme, couldn't you? Florals or checks like I've got on the grey ones. Okay, coming up to another corner, so let's just offer that fabric up. So here we've got to do a corner, let's just lift the foot up while we just manipulate the fabric around the corner. And luckily this, this polyester fabric seems to hold on to the tape quite nicely, so it almost grips it. Just stop there a second, pull it round. Now, we're coming back to where we started and we've got our little tail here that's loose, and that's good, we want it loose. So let's just come round this corner now and then I'll show you how we finish the binding off in the, for this particular method that I really like. Your machine's not behaving. Let's hope it just carries on to a few more stitches. And then just reverse back to secure your stitches. Needle up and then we'll snip our threads. So, as you can see, we've got the long tail left of our binding here. And we've got the short tail that we left at the start of the project. I'll put this out of the way for you. See the binding's all secured around the other th th um, three sides. So what we're going to do is we're going to lie our binding down flat onto our project. Make sure there's no puckers or anything else there. And I've got a seam gauge here. And what we need to do is, whatever the width of our binding here, in this case two and a quarter, that's the overlap we need to do from the straight start, so this has been cut straight across, the straight start of our binding. So if we just, I've adjusted the seam gauge to two and a quarter inches, lay it onto our fabric, and then I'm just going to use my finger just to note where I am and get some scissors. And then I'm just going to do a little snip straight across at a right angle to the fabric. That's fine. That gives us a good edge to start our next piece with. What we do then is, let's just tidy up these edges with my snips. I don't need that on there. Okay, so we can see these two pieces lying flat. No twists in any of it, just all flat. What we're going to do is, on this piece at the back here, we're going to open it out. So we can see all we've done is just lifted it and opened it out. Now what we're going to do is take this piece here and open it out as well and just offer it up against the other one. They should be at right angles. And what we're going to do is we're going to stitch diagonally on this. So on here I'm going to put a pin in here. When you get a bit better at it you can, or a bit more experienced at doing it, you don't need the pins in. But just for now, for demonstration purposes, I'll just put a couple of pins in so you can see. So you can see where this, the two lines where this has been double folded in and on the back there you can also see. Um, with bias you always sew from the outside edge to the outside edge. We wouldn't ever sew from the outside edge to the inside edge because that wouldn't give us what we need. It would just be wrong basically. Um, so what we do is we're going to sew from this side here to here. Again if you want to and if you want to be thorough I want to show you the proper way rather than the quick way, or I, I suppose. I'm just going to lay that down on our piece of work. I've got a pencil. I'll just get a ruler. 
oops, hit the camera, sorry. And what we'll do is we'll just draw a diagonal line and we're going from where the edges of the bias meet here. So we've got right sides together. I don't know if I said that or not. Right sides of the bias together. So from that corner to this corner here. So both are on the outside of the square that we've created by overlapping the fabric. And I'm just going to just do a quick line across to give me something to follow. And then we're back to our machine. With this, it would be useful to have some matching thread, but I'm going to be shortcutting this for you now because I th hope to be able to show you that it doesn't really matter. So we're just going to line our machine up, needle up with the edge of the bias. We're going to sew across our drawn line from corner to corner. There's no need to back tack on your threads because I've not found one that's come undone and because we're going to fold it again in a minute. So that's what we're going to end up with. We've got our, tri uh, sorry, our square where the fabrics have over overlapped there at right angles and we've sewn diagonally across on the two outside corners. So we're going to take our pins out now and then before we do anything else, just lay this down to turn it around slightly, we're going to just make sure that we've done this correctly and not got any, any twists. And if we've not got any twists, your join should be on the diagonal and there should be no twists in the bias at all. It should sit flat. So now that we're confident that we've done that right, I'm just taking my scissors. And about a quarter of an inch, doesn't have to be precise. Take off your little corners. I then finger press this section here just to open it out and score it with my nails. That's enough rather than having it open. That's enough rather than having to get the iron out and do that. So we'll just hold it open for now. And then I'm just going to lay my work back down again. Attach my threads. Oh, cut them a little bit short. Pull those out so they don't get tangled in the machine. And then reload the project. I'm just going to go back a couple of stitches from where I was previously just so that it just holds on to it and just secures it. So I just go slow straight, slow straight, so straight. Make sure the bias is sitting nicely. And if I need to, I'm just gonna pull the under, underneath fabric slightly. And then I'm just gonna keep sewing along the edge. Make so, sure that our seam for our bias is open. And we're gonna just keep the tension on here so that we don't then get a pucker where the, where I get back to the sewing line again. So just a few stitches over the edge and that's enough. Snip the edge ends off and there we go for now. This is our next completed stage. We now have bias all the way around our project. The next stage will be to fold this over like this and then attach it down. Now you can use a binding tool if you wanted to, on your, or binding foot on your machine. You can buy those. Um, I haven't got one of those, um, and you might not have two. So what I have tried before, let me just stop. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hand sew it down. Now, before everybody looks at me in horror thinking they have to hand sew everything, you don't have to hand sew it. It's just that I prefer the finish that a hand sewn edge gives you. So I've got one of the grey ones here that was machine stitched down and if you can see it's just a bit easy to miss a little bit of your edging or to have your edging wider in one section and narrow in another. It looks fine on the other side but because these towels are going to be used on both sides I did one or two this way and then just decided you know I don't like it that way. So instead, what I then started doing was I hand sewed them down. Oh, that's another one that's been machine stitched. I just did two before I gave up. Okay, so on this one here, I've machine stitched on one side and then I've hand sewn the binding down on the other. And that way you really can't tell the difference, especially if you use a matching thread to your item, you really can't tell a difference on your finished article. So let's go ahead and get some hand sewing thread together and a needle and I will join you back here. OK, 
Okay, so here we are. We've attached the binding onto our towels and we're just going to offer this up to the corners and all the way around. So you can pin this if you want to, just to hold it tight for you. So you're just folding your binding over so that your raw edges are in the inside. Do either side of your corner first, each corner, because that will just hold it just nice and steady for you. And then if you just use your fingers, the binding should just smooth down nicely around that corner for you. Sometimes your threads can get caught on, on the pins, so I'm not always a fan, but it, it depends on, on, on how comfortable you feel. And if you want to adjust that first, then you can do. So from the back, we've got our machine edged, and you can see the pins going through. When we make our stitches, our stitches will only be seen on tiny, just tiny little nicks out of the um, threads out of the binding. So don't worry about that. So we have our needle and thread. I've chosen coordinating thread with the toweling. We're going to make a quilter's knot. So to do this, we take our needle and the edge of our thre thread. We put the thread across the needle at a right angle and hold it with our thumb. And then we do four wraps is great. So one, two, three, four. So we've got four wraps of the thread around the needle. And then hold the needle with my, and the th wraps around the needle with my finger and thumb. Push my needle through. And then if as we just gently smooth that along, we get a very nice knot on the end of our thread. Okay, so once we're ready with that, this is just a single thread as well, I've not doubled it up. So, in order to start, what we do is we're going to bury our, our knot into our work. So, we we go to the place where we're not stitched down yet. Just going to take a little stitch inside where the thread will be hidden and pull that through. And we can just tuck the, the tail of our thread in. Okay. Now what we're going to do is, with all of our stitches, we're going to take little bites of our binding, but literally just a millimetre or two, so a couple of threads, that's all we need, and we're going to put our needle in at right angles to that last stitch, or where we started off. We're then going to come out on the edge of our binding, and then we're going to pull our needle through. So the actual travelling is done behind the binding inside your work, so again, we're going to put a little stitch at right angles to the binding stitch. And we're not going through the other side. So you can't see the needle going through the other side. And that's a good way of checking. If you can't see any silver, you won't see any thread on the wrong side. So again, then just pull it that through. And these stitches are just so nice and delicate that you won't really notice them with the tufts of the toweling fabric. So again, we're just taking those little stitches across the edge all the way round. Now we can take our pins out as we get there. Just keep checking, and that's fine, take the pins out. And then we can just keep checking that we've not got any silver on the back from the needle. And as I say, your stitch, you're always going to go into your toweling work or your piece of toweling at a right angle to your binding. And that way, when you give your stitches a little tug, they're almost invisible. And this can be quite therapeutic, just doing this hand stitching. I know some people abhor it, but um, if you can persevere and learn how to do a decent, even hand stitch, it's really handy to know. And if I just show you the other side, We've got no stitches sewing on that side. That side was machined down. And now on the other side, we've got a nice neat edge as well. Probably just needs a press just to make it sit really nicely. But it just depends, depends on how, how much you want it to be. Absolutely perfect. But these are quite useful if you sew all of your binding by machine on the first pass, so the first way down, and get a whole pile of them. And then what you can do is then sit and if you want to watch TV or chat to a friend or what have you, then you can stitch these down whilst you are otherwise occupied. It's a good way of stopping for snacking as well because if your hands are busy, 
when you're working then you don't tend to notice the time passing so much. Again on the corners, just take it steady as you're going around the corners. You shouldn't you should be able to get round because we cut the bias on the bias, the bias tape on the bias and strips of fabric before we made our bias binding, then they should go round the corners quite nice. Let's just take that pin out, it's getting in our way. A little knot in the thread that will just smooth that out. And again we just take these little stitches all the way around, just a couple of threads. As I say, you pull it tight and you won't see it on your work. And there we are in the back, all nice and neat. So, that shows you the construction method of these. You can make as many or as few as you like. And they are really handy. And what I'll do is I will just take a quick... Um, add a little bit onto the end of this video and show you my towels in what operation is a bit of a serving suggestion for want of a better phrase. You can see how I, I use these and put these out for my visitors. So that's it for sewing the binding down. Okay, make yourself comfy. It'll take a little while but well worth it for that very very neat finish on both sides. Okay thank you very much. One thing I did forget to say is that every few stitches you can do what's called a lock stitch. So like here, if you want to just uh, make sure that your binding doesn't unravel if one of the threads breaks, then just take a double stitch either inside your work or on your binding in the same place. And what that means is it just acts like an anchor so that if the thread were to break down here or after here it wouldn't all come undone because your lock stitch would is more robust and would hold the threads in place. You don't need to do that all the way along, it's just at that point. And also for finishing off we do something similar. So what I, if I just hurry along here for you a minute, I'll just wrap the work around my finger, it just for me that's just an easier way of doing it but it just depends on how you like to work. Okay so we're just about to come up to the edge where we started. It's a bit too big a bite, that's it. Try and keep your bites quite nice and neat of your binding because that will help the overall finish. Just a little bit more to go. Thank you for your patience whilst I just finish this. And then what we're going to do here is we're about where we started is we're going to do a little lock stitch on the top. So we do a double stitch in the same place or thereabouts. And then what I do is then I just start to take a couple of little stitches. So I'm just going through the toweling, just little stitches along. And I'm sort of doing a little back stitch. So I'm just going backwards from where my thread has come out and then come forward a little bit. And if you just do several of these little stitches on top of each other, it's very unlikely that your thread is going to unravel itself and, and undo that many stitches. So again, that's a useful tip just for finishing off without any knots and it makes it nice and neat. So just snip your thread off. It's going to look like another tuft of the wool because the, the thread is so, so close in colour. And we have our little finished towel. Okay, I'll just show you, I'll go on now to the video show you how, how these are used. Okay, so here I am in my guest bathroom and this is where I use these little towels. I've got a few here that have just come out of the wash. So I thought I'd just show you how I fold and store these. I've got a little basket by the side of my sink and I roll these up and put them into a basket like this. So in order to fold them, I fold them into thirds and then just roll them on their end like that and then I just tuck them in. They do have a habit of unfolding until you've got them sandwiched in so again into thirds and then just roll them along and they just sit nicely 
inside this little basket. I actually got the basket from Zara a while ago, but you can find other, other baskets. And this one's just got a white fabric insert, which looked quite pretty, I thought, so, and suits my, my colour scheme. So in order to use these, let me just hold that last one up for you and show you. So in order to use these, what we do, wash our hands, best do with our soap and water. People take a towel out of the basket, dry their hands, and then I and then I then drop them onto the floor here. I've got a basket and I just drop them out down there. I can then collect them at the end of the day and pop them in the wash. The rest of the towels just stay here on the side for everybody to use. So I hope you've enjoyed that little video and I hope it's useful and I hope you have a go at making some for yourself. Bye everybody.